What's up, everybody? My name is Jason, and welcome to Brother Floyd. This is a difficult video for me to do. Very. But I've had a very emotional morning. And I've wrestled with, along of many of you, how can I use my brand, if there is such a thing, to honor Brother Floyd, and I say that with the utmost respect, George Floyd, who was murdered by at least one and probably three cops. Knowing myself, I would go through a range of emotions. My first emotion, along with many of you, when I saw the video, was rage. And I'm still fucking pissed. Full disclosure, I was arrested when I was 22 years old. I got into a silly altercation at a bar. I was thrown to the ground by three cops, ironically. And they had their knee in the back of my neck, handcuffed me around the ankles as well. And I was a specimen. I had played college football. I was 30 pounds lighter than I am right now. And I remember the panic. When you're an alpha male, like it looks like George was, your instinct is to fight. And when someone's got you pinned down, you start to hyperventilate. Your adrenaline, your cortisol goes through the roof. And it, I was only, I would say, need for a minute to a minute and a half. And I thought I was going to die. I was like, <clears throat> just, I couldn't catch my breath. So it's very painful to watch. So I sat for a couple of days and I know I speak for a lot of folks that create content. Um, what is this going to do for me crying on camera? Uh, perhaps dropping F-bombs and frankly, I don't give a fuck. This moment is too big for me to keep my mouth shut. So I prayed and I waited and I waited and last night the good Lord, as he always does, gave me a blessing I'd like to share with you. I had just had dinner in this place called Avalon in Alpharetta with a beautiful woman. It was a first date. Some potential there if she's watching. <laughs> and I had shown her to her vehicle and I was waiting on an Uber. It was about 10 o'clock at night. And because of Corona, everything shuts down early, so the valets were gone. And then all of a sudden, I heard an unmistakable sound of a Ferrari pulling up, you know, the <laughs> And this beautiful black convertible Ferrari backs in slowly to the valet spot. There was plenty left. And after a minute or two on the phone, this guy gets out, and it's this huge, Six foot six, 280 pound guy. I'm 6'3", 250. But he was big and he had a much more beautiful beard than I did. And I had this voice inside of me, what I'll call God, say, get up and go talk to him. So the obvious opener is either his size, did he play football as I did in the car? I didn't go either. We could have also touched on the subject of Brother Floyd. That didn't come up, at least not directly. So I walk over to him and respecting his social distance about six feet away, I said, how you doing, man? And he's looking at me like, who the fuck is this white guy? You know, he's very defensive. You know, are we about to throw down his, you know, I can only imagine what folks of another color and race are thinking. Am I part of the problem or the solution? Nobody knows. And he says to me, I'm all right. 
no more small talk. And I said, ah, oh, I said, uh, you come and he grabs some dinner. This place over here has great lamb chops, but I think they close in about 10 minutes. Nah, waiting on my girl. And he points over at one of the restaurants there. And I'm like, oh. So we slowly exchange small talk. And without ever bringing up Brother Floyd, he looks at me about a minute, minute and a half in, and he turns his head like this, backs up and turns his head, and he realized what I was doing. He realized the white guy had the courage to come up and give him the love and the respect that he deserves. We didn't talk about the car. We didn't talk about his size. We didn't bring up Brother Floyd. And his whole body changed. He loosened up his shoulders. He started talking about this. We talked about football. We talked about the weather. We talked about where he grew up. And then out comes his girlfriend, beautiful young lady. And she starts walking towards the Ferrari. And uh, we did break Corona protocol. We came together, you know, the whole handshake like this. And I'll never forget this. He pulls me in. Close. And he looks at me dead in the eye, just like this. And he says, you all right. In African slang, of course. You are all right. And he shakes me like that. And he goes around to the other side. And I'm telling you, he was 100 pounds lighter. He opens the door for his girl. She looked like it was surprised. I don't know if he normally does that. She certainly looked like he doesn't normally do that. And he comes around the car and he takes one more look over at me and he just goes, folks, the only way we're gonna end this thing we call racism, the only way that we're gonna never have to see what we saw on camera again, is moments like that, person to person, brother to brother, brother to sister, one day, one moment at a time. You know, our children watch us. You see these videos of these tiny little kids that are two years old, black and white and brown and everything in between, and they're just hugging and kissing each other. We breed the racism on both sides into them. They're not born with it, at least not in most cases. They learn it. And if enough children, men and women, can see what went down between him and I last night, slowly but surely, we get to what you might call a critical mass. And racism, for lack of a better word, begins to fade away, slowly but surely. So I would encourage everyone, when you come across someone of another color, or God forbid, an election year of another political persuasion or another sexual persuasion or anybody who's different than you. All you really have to do is say, hey, what's up? How you doing? And just like last night, there'll be a moment where they realize without even bringing up Brother Floyd. I see what you're doing, white boy. You're giving me as a black man who could probably whoop your ass the respect I deserve. And he in turn did the same to me. And both of us left that night a different man. And I guarantee there was some Luther or Barry White going on at that place in the next hour because of what he and I shared together. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope this story, these tears, this moment does something for you. And thanks so much for watching.